Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so if you do consider dropping likes and if you do consider uh, subscribing to the channel um, as always so lots to negotiate on this video today but the first topic of the development um, I'm going to give you an update on uh, is in regards to Harry Maguire of course um, he has been, I have been updating you about him um, on a regular basis because we do know he's one of um, our priority uh, targets um, and all that obviously we're going to have to break the world transfer record uh, for the defender uh, to get him um, a deal um, the liner for Harry Maguire because obviously you know, looking at ultimately you know, Leicester don't even want to sell uh, Harry Maguire this is why they've priced him out of the transfer market and this is why you know they are demanding them um, an extortionate amount for him you know Leicester want around 80 you know some reports say they want around uh, 90 million pounds but I was reading their reports uh, the other day it was saying that Ed Woodward um, is keen on recommending Harry Maguire uh, to Manchester United and it did say you know we are prepared to spend 80 million pounds him it did say we was willing to offer him a, a, a five year uh, contract you know worth around 350,000 pounds a week it also said that Manchester United, you know, could also offer Eric Bay or Marcus Rojo um, as, uh, to Leicester as part of the deal uh, for Harry Maguire. And I think, you know, using Rojo as part of the deal, I think, you know, would be beneficial for us because we do know it's, uh, Rojo is one of the players that's looking it, that's uh, looking very imminent. That's going to be leaving uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. But obviously, we do know that Rojo um, has enjoyed a very, very difficult time at Manchester United, you know, mainly with the injuries and in that um, he's currently uh, sustained, hasn't really been you know, being, uh, given her uh, the opportunity. So Rojo, as part of the deal with Harry Maguire, I think would be very, very good. With Eric Bay, you know, I wouldn't be uh, too sure of him and all that because it said you know we could offer Eric Bay. You know I think his Ma Manchester United career has been badly affected. I think I think he's got great potential. I think he's a good central defender. But like I said with Eric Bay, I think his Manchester United career has been badly affected with the amount of injuries he sustained. You know with his fallout um, on the managers um, and all that. So we could offload you know one of that one of them. It's also come out today saying that you know Manchester United are willing to offer Andres Pereira um, in exchange for Harry Maguire. So maybe we are willing to offload one of our Finch players as part of the deal. So this could obviously you not know, uh, you know uh, persuade you know Leicester were to lower their asking price uh, for Harry Maguire so yeah they do want around 80 or 90 million pounds obviously we do know he's one of our priority targets you know it has been Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that have been uh, battling out uh, for um, his services and all that but he did say you know we're confident we can outbid Manchester City and we can beat Manchester City to the signing um, of Harry Maguire and all that. I think for Harry Maguire's preference you know he does uh, want to uh, join uh, Manchester City because obviously you know Manchester City um, are the dominant force um, in England um, at the one moment you know winning the domestic uh, treble uh, last season and of course they've got champions League football um, and all that, but reportedly City are not are reluctant, you know, to pay up to eighty million pounds for him. City are only value Harry Maguire um, around uh, fifty million uh, pounds. But if he was to go to Manchester City, you know, Harry Maguire would not be guaranteed a uh, first team uh, football. You know, he would find a uh, first team football very very difficult because, like I said, City got John Stones in their back line. They've got Otto Mendy. They've also uh, got uh, Laporte um, and all that. But City are not willing to pay up to eighty million pounds. But obviously, City identified Harry Maguire as their number one target. You know, to uh, replace uh, Vincent uh, Company because obviously, you know, City are looking for the replacement. Uh, for Vincent uh, Company but if we paid 80 or 90 million pounds for him obviously you know, it would make him the most expensive defending world football and of course make him the most um, expensive um, English player of all time obviously you know, uh, at the moment Carl Walker um, is the most um, expensive um, English uh, player and all that but we do know how Maguire's been at Leicester um, a couple of uh, seasons I think in total he's made about 101 um, appearances um, in the Premier League you know Leicester got him a couple of years ago from Hull City for around 17 million pounds obviously he signed a new long term contract uh, last summer with Leicester so he's under contract them until 2000 23 but he's not worth 80 or 90 million pounds you know he's, he's not he's not a Virgil van Dijk he's not a colour bar from you know Napoli he's not a Rafael van Aalte from Real Madrid he's nowhere near their calibre or um, level but don't get him on I think he's still a good uh, central uh, defender I just don't think he's worth um, 80 um, or 90 million pounds but like I said Leicester don't want to sell him this is why they're demanding um, an extortionate um, amount for him but he has been relentlessly linked to a move to Old Trafford um, as Harry Maguire um, obviously you know uh, reflecting back last summer you know Harry Maguire was one of the players that Jose Mourinho did want but I think last summer Leicester wanted around £70 million pounds, but Manchester United um, of course uh, were reluctant uh, to pay that but we do know how Maguire's 26 he's in his prime you know he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him and plus um, he's British and obviously you not know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit uh, British uh, talent uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer and obviously you know he wants to rec he wants to develop a squad um, of young hungry homegrown talent um, and, all that. and we actually are moving away from the policy you know of signing uh, them well um, established uh, players but like I said I think we need two central defence in my opinion and we do need someone that can go alongside Victor Lindelof um, now back line. I do believe, you know, that Harry Maguire, you know, would be the right uh, solution. So, yeah, we are willing, now we the reports have said, you know, we're willing to offer uh, Andres Pereira um, in exchange uh, for Harry Maguire um, and all that. A um, lot of talks were going out uh, yesterday, uh, wasn't there, um, about, you know, is he Diop uh, from West Ham now? I think we are seeing him um, as an alternative, you know, if we don't get a deal um, on the line uh, for Harry Maguire. You know, West Ham want around £60 million pounds, uh, for Issy Diop, like I said, he's not worth £60 million. Pounds. No West Ham central defender, you know, is uh, worth uh, £60 million. Uh, pounds. But it, I 
I think reports uh, came out uh, last week, you know, saying that Manchester United uh, were in for him. I think for me, is he a uh, Diop's uh, preference? You know, he's keen on making uh, the move uh, to Manchester United, but looking at ultimately, you know, West Ham um, are reluctant, you know, to currently um, sell him. Um, he's only uh, 22 uh, years of age. He's six foot four, so very, very tall. So, so I suppose um, he's very, very um, good um, in the air. Um, he's a very, very good um, athlete um, and all that. And um, yeah, he's six foot four and he's only uh, 22 uh, years of age. So he has still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. Obviously, he's had a year um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. So he's proven now in the Premier League. Obviously, last season for West Ham, I think he... Uh, he played about 33 games um, in the Premier League. I think he made about 38 appearances um, in all competitions. Uh, and West Ham uh, got him uh, last summer from Toulouse, so was it for around uh, £22 million. Um, he did sign um, a five-year contract, so he is under contract to West Ham um, until 2023. But I don't really know much um, about this player, but he just said, you know, Manchester United, of course, um, are in for him. And basically, you know, we've seen him um, as an alternative, you know, to Harry Maguire. But, you know, he's gonna, uh, you know, Issa Diop, you know, would be a much cheaper solution than Harry Maguire. He would be a t cheaper solution than Kulab Barley. Um, obviously, he'd be cheaper solution here than Matty's uh, Delitter and all that but you know I don't think Issy uh, Diop is worth £60 million pounds. again West Ham have priced him out of the transfer market because obviously you know West Ham you know don't uh, want to uh, currently um, sell him but it's very essential that we do uh, you know address that defensive um, area um, obviously because we have got um, issues uh, defensively as that was proven last season because we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League uh, last season and we need to see vast improvements you know going on into this season and what of course uh, what we uh, saw uh, last season because last season we were very disappointed you know we finished six you know didn't win um, any silverware um, and we know we haven't won any silverware um, in the last uh, couple of uh, scenes um, and all that so it's very essential this summer that we do get um, our number one uh, targets obviously it's going to be hard for us to get our number one targets because we're not in Champions League football uh, for next season Champions League football is always very pivotal you know when you do uh, want to uh, get your uh, number one uh, targets um, and all that obviously we've got Daniel James um, on the board our first signing this summer our first signing will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer Reva. but obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to build on that now and bring another four or five more players in, uh, to Manchester United and all that you know spending three 200 odd million pound you know should be enough to get us about four or five uh, players in you know depending on um, how we are uh, with our recruitment but a lot of people you know have said you know we should be uh, sensible uh, with our recruitment uh, this summer but uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was saying towards the back end of last season anyway you know he was, he'd was he been contacted by a number of agents you know saying that their players you know do want to uh, come to uh, Manchester United um, and all that but you can see the deficiencies um, in the squad obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants you know wants to build a squad you know worthy um, of the club's uh, mystery um, and all that but the question is now can he succeed um, in these conditions because you know we're not expected to appoint a sporting director in, you know, which is um, very, very um, disappointing because we've been trying to get a director of football in at least uh, for the last uh, couple of uh, months and obviously that's a structural change uh, that we do need at the club is getting a director um, of football because like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer no needs uh, backing uh, this summer but obviously now um, it's looking like we're not going to get one in so we are going to be sticking with uh, with the same structure and obviously you know, Ed Woodward um, is going to be overseeing um, our transfer business uh, this summer. So yeah, there was so, there, there was so many name, names, you know, linked over uh, that director as well um, like I currently um, said to you but, you know, we are going to be um, sticking uh, with the same structure I'll probably say give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, maybe at least a year, maybe even a couple of uh, years, you know, to see how things uh, work out um, and all that. And I hope it does work out uh, for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And I don't want us to sack him because, you know, we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers. Obviously, we've already sat three managers since Alex Ferguson retired. Obviously, you know, we have been playing catch up uh, for the last uh, five um, or six years because obviously, you know, we've been mismanaged and we've obviously, you know, uh, been um, underachieving, even though a hell of a lot of money um, has been uh, spent um, at the club uh, since Alex Ferguson retired. You know, a lot of players, players have come in, you know, players, um, of course, um, have left them um, and all that. And, you know, with the players that we've got um, over the years haven't fit the culture of the club, they haven't fit the history um, of the club um, and all that. And obviously, it's essential this summer that we do, you know, get the right players that can elevate Manchester United forward, you know, that can fit the culture of the club, that can fit the history of the club. Because clearly, you know, these are cultural uh, problems um, at Manchester United, um, of course, um, and all that. But I probably do expect around for at least three, maybe three, four, maybe five players uh, to leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. I think another problem as well, you know, we have like, far too many uh, players' uh, contracts uh, run down. That's been another issue. But I love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know he's a great player for for 11 years um, under um, Alex Ferguson um, and all that um, I know he hasn't really um, got the experience um, of a manager and all that not to the highest level and that's you know one thing uh, that does uh, currently uh, concern me um, and all that but hopefully you know he can uh, take us uh, forward um, and all that um, I hope he has got the stature you know to get us in, in that commanding position where we want to be I do believe our expectations going on into this season probably will you know will be you know to finish in the top four maybe in the Cowboy Cup you know maybe win the Europa League but I, you know I don't think you know I think we're at least a couple of years off you know from winning the league or you know challenging for the league um, and all that because obviously at the moment City strides ahead of us you know Liverpool um, of course um, has strides ahead of us um, and all that so I do believe next season our expectations you know, will be to uh, finish um, in the top four um, and all that so you know we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world and you know you know, players you know, still may want to come to uh, Manchester United you know, even though we have been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years but like I said we're still one of the biggest clubs in the world one of the most successful teams you know uh, well, well they are the most successful team um, in, 
England, you know, historically am and all that. Um, but like I said, regardless of who our manager is, you know, no one's ever going to follow Alec, Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, we're never going to achieve um, what we achieved um, under Alex Ferguson, you know, for 20 uh, odd years and um, the success that we did um, have um, under him. But yeah, very essential that we do uh, get um, our number one attack. So there's some black side. I think Harry Maguire, you know, would be fantastic for Manchester United, but I just don't think he's worth 70 or 80 million pounds or 90 million pounds, should I say. And uh, this is why Manchester United are trying to offload one. Of, we'll try to offload one of our players um, as part of the deal. So Leicester could obviously you not know, convince Leicester you know, to currently uh, lower their price tag. But I think it did say Ed Woodward is keen on spending up to eighty million pounds um, on his uh, current uh, services. But we are seeing Issy Diop um, as the alternative um, and all that. I don't think we'll get Kula Bailey uh, from Napoli because obviously I, I haven't read much uh, up about him lately. But um, obviously you know he's been one of our main priority targets you know for a while. But I don't think we're going to get him because obviously Napoli have priced him out of the transfer market. You know, they're demanding um, an extortionate amount. It's going to take a bit of at least a hundred odd million pounds, you know, to convince uh, Napoli, you know, to currently um, offload him and all that. Obviously, reports came out three or four weeks ago saying that we had a 90 million pound bid turned down for him. Also, around we did have a 90 million pound bid turned down for him. Obviously, last year, you know, we had three bids turned down uh, for Colour uh, Barley, so I don't think we're uh, going to get a uh, Colour Barley um, and all that. So I think that's definitely no, not going to happen now. But yeah, so many central defenders on our agenda. Matty Stillett, like I said, with him, he's not going to happen now. He's Matty Stillett. I think. You know, I think that Matt Easterlit is likely to end up going to PSG now. I think that's his, uh, you know, uh, likely uh, destination. He did initially you say Barcelona and PSG um, are his two uh, likely uh, destinations, but I think Barcelona have turned it down now. So I think, you know, PSG are definitely now um, in the ascendancy. Reports came out saying that PSG, you know, willing to offer him £70 million. Pounds. Um, well, they've offered Ajax £70 million, pounds, as he said the other week, but with add ons um, included. And it did say PSG offered him a five year contract delay, you know, worth around 340 grand a week um, and all that. But so many teams have inquired about his service because it's looking like you know that Matty Stillett is going to be uh, leaving um, Ajax well it's very imminent but it remains uncertain what still where we'll be playing um, his trade uh, next season because I don't think Matty Stillett yet has made um, a, de a decision um, in his future but you know Manchester United would in for him you know for quite um, a long time because at one point he was one of um, our priority uh, targets but I think we've come to accept the fact now that we're not going to get him even though we did offer him a contract you know worth up to 350 grand a week um, obviously you know this equates to almost 17 million pounds a year and obviously if that was to process it and making the most expensive defender in world football obviously Sorry, making the highest paid defender, uh, one of the highest paid uh, you know, players um, at Manchester United, sorry, I should I say, and making the highest paid uh, teenager um, in world football um, and all that. But obviously, I think Matty Slick wants to go to a club that can offer him Champions League football. Also, you know, wants to go to a club that can assure him for team football. And of course, Manchester United would be able to do that. But um, like I currently said, you know, we haven't uh, got a Champions League uh, football and that is uh, the current uh, problem um, in this. But Barcelona have been in the ascendancy at least in the last uh, couple of uh, months and all that. You know, Barcelona have already got a deal over the line for his current teammate, Frankie de Jong who, of course, Barcelona, you know, paid uh, £65 million uh, pounds for. So it was looking very likely he was going to be going to Barcelona um, a couple of uh, weeks ago, um, especially. Uh, but I think, you know, Barcelona, you know, were not willing to make what the lit was demanding. They were not willing to make what his agent, Riley was demanding. So basically, you know, they couldn't come to um, an agreement um, on the terms. So according to recent reports I've had, I think now Barcelona have currently um, opted out. We also know Liverpool um, have inquired um, about um, his services. The main fact is why Liverpool were in for him, because obviously they wanted to put Matty still alongside Virgil van Dijk um, in their back line. Um, obviously, you know, Juventus were in for him at one point by Munich with him for him but by Munich now um, have opted him out of the race uh, for um, Matty Serdele City with him for him but there's been so many teams there that have inquired about his service and he has, and he has uh, been widely spoken about uh, throughout uh, the course of this window in terms of the transfer fees he's probably going to cost you from 70 you know to between 17 you know, to 75 million pounds because that's what um, he's initially uh, rated at um, and all that but obviously he's going to want to rejuvenate his career as Matty Serdele and he's going to want to take his football and career to the next level obviously so far spent the entirety of his career with Ajax being an Ajax player since the age of 8 the age of 9 um, obviously he's now a uh, 19 years of age, made his senior debut with just uh, the age um, of 17, got named captain at the age um, of 18, and obviously the only defender to win the Golden Boy Award, and I think he won the Golden Boy Award uh, last season, or was, yeah, it was last year he won uh, the Golden Boy Award, and enjoyed a great season last season with Ajax, you know, winning the domestic double with them, that was the first time 17 years uh, that Ajax, you know, had won the domestic double, obviously won the Eredivisie title and all that, you know, progressed uh, to the Champions League uh, semi-final, so he kind of uh, leave um, Ajax, you know, with his um, head um, held up high, but I do believe it's not fully certain yet because he has not made a decision on his future, but I think he will be playing Hermes trade um, in France uh, next season, you know, with uh, PSG um, and all that. So we're not going to get Matty Stillet, you know, we're not going to get Colour Barley. So now we're looking at getting Howard Maguire. If we don't get Howard Maguire, we are basically you not know, seeing uh, Issa, you know, Issa uh, Diop um, as a current um, alternative, um, you know, to, uh, you know, Howard Maguire um, and all that. 
As he updated you um, in the early hours um, of this morning, um, in regards to Amal Mampasaka uh, from Crystal Palace, uh, reports uh, reflect, reflected out uh, yesterday saying that you know we had a fifty million pound bid uh, turned down for Amal Mampasaka. This is the second bid now that we've had uh, turned down uh, from Crystal Palace uh, for Amal Mampasaka. But this this offer, you know, from from us, you know, was not a fi uh, fifty million pound offer, you know, um, up front. It wasn't a fifty million pound um, offer um, up front. Uh, I think Crystal Palace, you know, do want a uh, fifty million um, up front um, and all that. Uh, but we reportedly offered thirty. Five million um, up front, you know, with fifteen million um, in bonuses um, and all that. But you know, Crystal Palace, you know, were not happy uh, with the structure um, of the offer, so they want uh, reportedly, you know, fifty million pounds um, up front. So Manchester United, you know, are willing to pay fifty million pounds um, up front. But yeah, we did um, off, you know, it was we we initially, you know, didn't offer fifty million up front. It was thirty-five million up front, like I said, with fifteen million um, in bonuses. But obviously, you know, we had a week, we had um, a forty million pound bid, you know, turned down for him uh, the other week um, and all that. But I think in looking at ultimately, you know, Crystal Palace don't want to sell him. But I think Crystal. I said, you know, they want at least um, around uh, 60 million pounds for him um, and all that. But I think, you know, Am Wan Bissaka has actually you know, informed uh, Crystal Palace, you know, that he wants to uh, join uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. Obviously, you know, he's one of um, our priority uh, targets um, and all that. Obviously, you know, he's been he's been on um, he's been on Manchester United's agenda, you know, for quite uh, some time. And hopefully, you know, we can uh, get um, a deal um, over the line for him because I do like him a lot. He is uh, predominantly um, a right back. You know, some people would say, you know, Am Wan is not worth uh, 50 million uh, pounds. You know, I'm still a bit sceptical, you know, of Am Wan you know, coming uh, to Manchester United. I'm still not fully convinced he's going to be uh, coming um, as yet but you know he definitely you know, wants to uh, leave uh, Crystal Palace um, and all that but he's only uh, 21 uh, years um, of age you know plus um, he's British so he is one of um, England's um, upcoming uh, talents um, and all that obviously he only made his senior debut in February um, of last year uh, for Crystal Palace um, and obviously last season established himself um, as a first team regular he's made about 42 senior appearances uh, for Crystal Palace uh, initially you know when he was uh, younger he was um, an out and out winner but as he was developing um, he got rotated um, as a right back so he has been a Crystal Palace player you know since like what uh, the age of the Eleven um, and all that as Am Wan Bissaka, but he has been one of um, our priority uh, targets because, like I said, you know we do uh, need um, a right back because we need a replacement for Antonio Valencia. You know we need um, an upgrade uh, to Ash Young and we need a cover up for Diego Dalot. So and I think Am Wan Bissaka, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution. So we've had a fifty, we've had, a, you know, we've had a, a fifty million pound bid turned down. It wasn't fifty million pounds um, up front we offered. Like I said, it was thirty five million up front with fifteen million, uh, you know, um, you know, bonuses um, involved. But like I said, Crystal Palace were not happy with the structure um, of the offer um, and all that. So maybe they would be tempted to selling him you know if we were to offer you know 50 million pounds um, up front for him um, of course but I do really really like him and you know I'm hopeful we can still get a deal over the line for him you know we held, we held uh, talks uh, with Crystal Palace and um, well we heard felt further more talks with Crystal Palace during the weekend over coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee it also did basically say uh, the other day I think it was or was it last week that uh, I think I updated you about that Crystal Palace we partly want uh, Wilford Zaha's uh, selling clause uh, to be removed before they allow uh, Anwan Bissaka uh, to join uh, Manchester United um, and all that but he de he's informed Crystal Palace you know that he does want to make the move to Manchester United because obviously Amman Bissaka is going to want to you know rejuvenate his career he's, he's going to want to take um, his football and her career to the next uh, level um, and all that but I do believe he'd blend in very very well um, in that right back position uh, for Manchester United I think he's got the ability to elevate Man Manchester United forward I think his defensive capabilities um, are very very good but you know there's been quite a few right backs um, on our uh, current um, agenda um, obviously you know Thomas Munier has uh, been on um, our agenda I think we've probably seen you know Munier as an alternative you know to Amman Bissaka but looking at it from a financial point of view you know Munier is going to substantially cost us a lot lesser than Amwan Bissaka you know looking at it because you know it came out the other week saying that PSG you know want around £25 million pounds, uh, for Amwan Bissaka uh, sorry for uh, Thomas uh, Munier my uh, mistake they want about £25 million pounds for Thomas uh, Munier and all that and he did say Manchester United um, and Arsenal you know were uh, infinite Manchester United had made initial contact Arsenal had made um, initial uh, contact term and all that but he said from his own preference um, he wants to uh, join uh, Manchester United does Thomas Munier because reportedly he says he's been a Manchester United fan you know since um, he was um, a child you know, Munier um, is 27 uh, years um, of age, and I do like uh, you know Thomas uh, Munier um, a lot. He's predominantly a right back. He can also play in other positions, so he's very versatile. You know, he's got goals in him. Um, he's got assists in him, um, and all that. Um, as uh, Thomas uh, Munier, he has only got um, a year uh, left on um, his contract uh, with PSG, but obviously he's found himself service uh, to requirements um, at PSG um, as Thomas uh, Munier, and this, this is probably the main factor reason why he's set to leave uh, PSG uh, this summer. Obviously, Arsenal were keen on him because obviously you know they've got issues uh, defensively. It's going to be hard for them to have a competitive summer window because they're not in. Champions League football uh, for next season. Um, I think obviously they're going to look. They're looking for a replacement for Lichtenstein um, and all that. But they have been in for Thomas Munier, and obviously Munier has played um, under um, Umar Ramirez um, and all that. So maybe Umar Ramirez is keen on reuniting him. But 
reuniting with him. But actually, you know, Thomas Mounier, you know, flourished um, under Umran Ray's uh, guidance. But since Umran Ray left, you know, he's found himself uh, his two requirements. I think he has also, you know, sustained uh, quite um, a few injuries um, as uh, Thomas uh, Mounier. But P he's been at PSG three years. Um, he has not played um, in the Premier League uh, yet. But I do believe he's got all the attributes to definitely, you know, succeed um, in the Premier League. And I do believe he'd exceed um, expectation levels um, in the Premier League um, and all that. So obviously, you know, if we don't get Anwan Basaki, you know, we'll be, we will be looking, you know, to get uh, Mounier um, in. Um, but yeah, there's been uh, quite um, a few uh, right backs um, on our uh, current um, agenda um, and all that because we definitely need to address uh, that right hand side. I think the left hand side would okay because it seems to me that the majority um, of our attacker uh, comes uh, from that current uh, left hand side. And um, as I have been um, updating you um, on a regular basis um, about Sean Longstaff uh, from Newcastle, you know, he's moved to Manchester United now, you know, should be uh, very, very uh, imminent um, indeed. I don't think anything um, has been uh, fully uh, finalised um, as yet. Uh, reportedly, it says, uh, um, you know, we're close to, well, it came out last week about this saying that we're close to getting him... <coughs> He said we're close to getting Sean Longstaff uh, for around uh, twenty-five uh, million uh, pounds. Obviously, you know that is um, a reasonable uh, figure um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know last season was his first season in the senior squad uh, with Newcastle. Um, I think he joined their youth system um, in two thousand um, and sixteen. I think he played about nine games last season um, under uh, Rafael Benitez. I think he's mainly um, a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. I think he's also a uh, British. Um, he's only a uh, twenty-one uh, years um, of age um, and all that. Sean Longstaff. Obviously, um, he didn't play the last couple of months um, of the season. Obviously, you know because he sustained um, an knee ligament injury. You know in March. I think it was actually you know, against uh, West Ham. He sustained uh, this knee, uh, this knee li ligament um, injury. I, I, am I right? Is he still recovering uh, from this uh, knee uh, ligament injury? You know, uh, Sean Lonstaff. And also, you know, he's had uh, loan spells uh, with Kumanic. Um, he's also, you know, been um, on loan uh, with Blackpool um, and all that. So we are focusing on uh, getting um, a deal um, over the line uh, for Sean Longstaff. So it's looking likely, you know, he should be coming in. Um, obviously, as I've been updating you in the last couple of days, at least, um, about uh, Yari Tillemans uh, from Leicester. Now, reportedly, Manchester United um, have, de have, de have declined uh, the offer, you know, to actually, you know, sign uh, Yari Tillemans because reportedly, um, he has, uh, reportedly, he's been... Um, He's been um, offered, you know, well, Yari Tillman's, well, he's been offered, you know, the chance, you know, to sign her for Manchester United um, and all that because uh, Yari Tillman's um, has actually, you know, uh, confirmed uh, that he will not be uh, staying um, at Monaco uh, next season. So looking like he will be playing um, his trade uh, somewhere else uh, next season um, and all that. But reportedly, uh, we've, we, are, we have been offered, you know, the chance uh, to sign uh, Yari Tillman's, but reportedly, you know, we have rejected the opportunity, you know, to complete um, a deal for him um, and all that because obviously a lot of reports uh, were coming out, uh, was it last week uh, and all that, you know, saying that, you know, We'd revived our interest in Yari Tillemans and it did basically say, you know, we'd held a negotiation with his agent um, over the possible deal um, and all that. He is available for a reasonable figure. I think Monaco, you know, rate him at around £40 million. Pounds. You know, Monaco, of course, um, are open uh, to selling him. But he was very, very impressive, you know, throughout um, his loan spell uh, with Leicester. Obviously, he has returned uh, to Monaco now because his loan spell with Leicester um, has come uh, to an end. But obviously, I'd, 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 obviously was on, I'd been on loan with Leicester since January. I've had about five, six months um, of experience now um, under his belt um, in the Premier League and he was very, very impressive. You know, throughout um, his loan spell uh, with Leicester. I think it says Leicester are leading the race now because Leicester, of course, um, are keen on getting him um, on a permanent uh, deal. You know, Leicester um, have been in talks um, with uh, Monaco um, about this, um, of course. But obviously, you know, other teams um, have been in for him. You know, Tottenham have been in there for him. I think also Manchester City um, have inquired um, about um, his services. But he is only uh, 22 uh, years um, of age. Um, Jory Tillman's have still got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him. Um, obviously, you know, Monaco initially got him for Mandelet for around £21 million pounds a couple of years ago. Because uh, obviously, I think we was tracking him, you know, when he was at Mandelet. Because obviously, you know, Jory Tillman, you know, did uh, begin um, his career uh, with Mandelet um, and all that. But yeah, I think he's primarily a box-to-box -box, box, box -box midfielder. You know, I think he can also uh, play him as an attacking midfielder. So obviously, you know, I think Jory Tillman, you know, would be uh, the adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba because obviously we do know it's looking like that Paul Pogba um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, Manchester United um, and all that. But reportedly now we've um, actually you know, opted um, out of the race uh, for Yari Tillman's um, according uh, to uh, recent uh, reports. Um According to recent reports, you know, I've opted um, out of the race uh, for uh, Yari uh, Tillman's um, and all that. Always has been updating you on a regular basis about Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sport and Lisbon. Uh, reports uh, were coming out yesterday. Um, I was uh, reading up saying that Liverpool have put around the €45 million Euro bidding for him, which obviously equates to £40 million in pounds sterling. Um, and I don't think this would be enough you know, to convince you know, Sport and Lisbon you know, to currently um, offload him. A lot of reports in the Portuguese press, uh, press came out the other week saying that Liverpool um, had entered the race for him. Um, obviously, you know, it came out also saying that Tottenham were in for him, but now Tottenham have reportedly you know, ruled um, out and moved, so Tottenham are no longer in uh, for uh, 
Bruno uh, Fernandes um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, Tottenham were seeing him as seeing him as an alternative to Giovanni El Celso, and they were also seeing him as a possible replacement for Christian Eriksen because Christian Eriksen has obviously you now been linked to with a move uh, to Real Madrid, and obviously Tottenham are going to want a replacement for him if he goes. And obviously, Tottenham want to do transfer activity this summer because obviously they haven't done any transfer activity in the last uh, couple of uh, windows. Um, obviously, the last player they signed was Lucas Moore in 2018 in January of last year. And um, obviously their record sign is Davinson Sanchez, who they paid £42 million pounds for for my act, uh, back in uh, 2017. And obviously Mauricio Pochettino is going to want her uh, back in uh, this summer, but they're no longer in anywhere. You know, now we're for Bruno Fernandes. I think they want to get, you know, a deal over the line for Tango and Dumbele. I still believe Manchester United are in there for Tango and Dumbele uh, from Leon. Um, but um, yeah, uh, there's so much that's going on. From Tango and Dumbelli from Leon um, and all that. So I do believe, like I said, you know, we are still um, in for him. But Bruno Fernandes, so many teams um, have been in for him, but I still believe, you know, we are in the ascendancy um, of getting uh, the players uh, signature um, and all that. Um, he did initially say, you know, we had scheduled a meeting, you know, to uh, get um, a deal um, over the line, you know, to get a deal finalised there uh, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. So obviously Manchester United have been in for him so, for so long because he's been one of our main t uh, priority uh, targets um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, Liverpool are in for him, you know, Tottenham were in for him. Obviously, you know, Manchester City uh, were in for him, but now Manchester City were John, their interest are no longer in now uh, for Bruno Fernandes. Um, obviously, reports came out saying that Athletic Home Madrid are planning to put a bid in for him of around £44.6 million, pounds, you know, sometime uh, this week. But I think Sport and Lisbon, you know, want at least around £50 million pounds, uh, for Bruno Fernandes. It did initially say, you know, we were willing to pay up to around £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his services um, and all that. But like I said, he is primarily an attacking midfielder. Um, he is uh, 24 uh, years of age. You know, Bruno Fernandes said he would talk to Sport and Lisbon um, about leaving if a team comes up, you know, with an offer that he, could, he cannot uh, basically you know, refuse him and all that, and he still says, you know, he follows, you know, he follows the Italian football um, and all that. Because obviously, when he was a lot younger, you know, he spent the majority of his career um, in Italy, you know, the likes of San Pandaria um, and under knees um, and all that. But yeah, I still say we we're in the ascendancy of getting a deal over the line uh, for Bruno Fernandez. But like I said, he hasn't really played to the highest level as yet. You know, he has been uh, in Portugal um, a couple of years with Sporting Lisbon, but he's done really well. He's exceeded um, expectation levels um, and all that. And I do believe he could, you know, replicate this um, at Manchester United um, in the Premier League um, and all that. And obviously, um, you know, Bruno. Fernandez, he's going to want to rejuvenate his career, take um, his football in her career to the next level. Reports came out, was it a week or uh, two ago, saying that Ed Woodward was hesitant uh, over our transfer move for Bruno Fernandez because obviously, you know, Ed Woodward has got reservations about us spending big on players who, from his own perspective, doesn't think um, are going to step up to the mark. But I do believe Bruno Fernandez would step up to the mark. You know, he scored 31 goals uh, last season uh, for Sport in Lisbon, and we need, you know, with that, with that midfield area is one of the pivotal areas where we do need to strengthen up. I think we need at least two new additions in that midfield, you know, with, of course, uh, Paul Pobby, you know. Uh, leaving um, and all that um, but we need someone who can score goals from that midfield and you know we need depth in that midfield and I think Bruno Fernandes you know definitely you know would be uh, the right uh, solution um, and all that but he says we, you know we were probably you know, willing to pay up to £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his services he's, he's under contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023 his initial release cause um, is around uh, £86 uh, million uh, pounds, um, and all that so obviously he's been one of our uh, main uh, targets so it's very imperative that we do uh, you know get him a deal um, or the line for him <coughs> but you could say Bruno all right. All right. But like I said, I'd say Bruno Fernandes would also, you know, be the adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba and all that. But if Paul Pogba and Lukaku do get sold uh, this summer, you know, I think, you know, we that would probably raise us around £200 million, maybe even more. So I know Pogba is an imperative player and Oligan Solskjaer knows how imperative he is, but, but, he's, but obviously he's publicly announced that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the club. Obviously, he's told Tokyo reporters. He, this is actually the first time he's publicly um, announced it and he, he, he was even willing to go on strike, you know, to force through a move from Manchester United there uh, to Real Madrid um, and all that. So it's looking likely, you know, he's going to be uh, going. But like I said, sell Pogba and Lukaku will raise around £200 million. Pounds, so it will help us with our rebuilding process. And of course, um, it will help us uh, with our transition. So I think Bruno Fernandes will be a good replacement for Pogba. I also think Yara Tilleman, you know, would be um, a good uh, replacement uh, for Pogba. We know Herrera's obviously, you know, left the club. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to need um, a replacement uh, for him um, and all that. So yeah, there's so many midfielders, uh, of course, uh, that have uh, been on um, our um, agenda. I think the players that are looking likely to leave, like I said, Diamond's looking likely, you know, he's going to be leaving. Rojo's looking likely, you know, he's going to be. Uh, leaving we know Valencia's left 
Uh, Matic, I think he should leave, and I think we need a holding midfielder. But of course, Enemanu Matic isn't going to leave. He's going to be here uh, next season. He's too inconsistent, aging up, too slow um, in that midfield. We've got McTominay, but you know McTominay, of course, um, is too um, inexperienced um, at the moment. Um, and obviously, you know, Fellaini left back in January, so I do believe uh, that we need um, a holding midfielder. I do presume Sanchez definitely needs to go because um, you know he's been really inconsistent for Manchester United. Has no future at the club. Has lost that yard of pace. He is age 30 now, or is he 31 now? Uh, Alexis uh, Sanchez, um, but I think his wages. Um, we're having a really bad effect term um, on the football club. Um, obviously, he's on 400 grand a week. Potentially rises up to 500 grand a week based on based on the uh, based on the um, image rights and you know and bonuses and all that. It mounts up to around uh, 500 or thousand pounds a week. With Romelu Lukaku. Um, with uh, Romelu Lukaku, obviously, you know, he's been heavily linked uh, with a move uh, to Inter Milan. Um, obviously, you know, Lukaku, from his own preference, wants to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Inter Milan. Obviously, you know, recently described Antonio Conte as one of the best uh, managers um, in the world and obviously, you know, wants to play under Antonio Conte. Obviously, Antonio Conte has identified Lukaku as his number one target. Obviously, reflecting back a couple of years ago, um, obviously, reflecting back um, a couple of uh, years ago, um, uh, back in 2017, when Antonio Conte was uh, the manager um, of Chelsea, um, obviously, you know, um, he wanted uh, Romelu Lukaku then, but obviously, you know, he came to uh, Manchester United and all that. But it doesn't, as you say, that you know, Inter Milan have agreed everything with Lukaku, but the fee obviously, you know, the fee seems to be you know problematic um, at the moment uh, because I think Inter Milan are still negotiating with us and um, have come to an agreement um, on a fee. You know, reportedly, we want at least um, around uh, 62 million pounds. A couple of weeks ago, it reported saying that we wanted around 80 million pounds uh, for Romelu Lukaku, but obviously, you know, I think Inter Milan are reluctant, you know, to pay up to 62 million pounds for him. I think, for minute and land's perspective, you know, they rate Lukaku um, at around uh, 50 million uh, pounds. But yeah, you know, he's heavily linked to uh, with move uh, to Inter Milan because obviously Manchester United told him a couple of weeks ago, you know, that he can't uh, leave uh, the club. Uh, the uh, Also, Solskjaer told him that he is a uh, service to requirements at Manchester United because obviously, you know, Romelu Lukaku um, is reluctant, you know, to play a backup role uh, to Marcus Rashford. We do know Lukaku's been here two seasons. Obviously, he did well in, um, in his first season, but he didn't replicate that in his second season because he enjoyed a difficult second season with Manchester United because, like I said, you know, Rashford um, is mainly a uh, first choice um, ahead of him um, and all that. But uh, potentially, yeah, Inter Milan have agreed uh, the personal terms um, and that with him. I think they have um, agreed um, a five-year deal uh, with Romelu Lukaku. They have um, agreed um, a five-year deal uh, with Romelu Lukaku, which means he could earn around £6.6 6 million um, in bonuses um, until 2024. It also said that Inter Milan are willing to uh, meet um, his wage demands um, and all that. Uh, but obviously, no, they haven't come to um, an agreement um, on a fee. Um, obviously, no, we're looking to recruit the majority of the money that we did pay for him from Everton back in 2017, because initially we paid £75 million pounds for him. With add-ons included, several add-ons included, £15 million, which had risen it to £90 million. Pounds. Obviously, has still got uh, three years uh, left um, on his contract, and obviously he's on about £250,000 a week um, is Romelu uh, Lukaku but like I said you know it would be beneficial if we do sell him because he's one of the problematic players um, in the club as you all know I have got strong reservations um, about Lukaku you know he's not really good in the air he hasn't got that endless potential um, obviously you know doesn't get enough of them uh, runs in behind him and all that you know he's a big game uh, bottler so I've got so many uh, strong reservations about him but his pedigree is still very very good in the Premier League his ratio is good you know, he has scored a hell of a lot of uh, goals in the Premier League but you know we do uh, need to uh, sell uh, Romelu Lukaku that is a uh, very very um, essential um, indeed uh, in some line report you know, need to raise around £40 million pounds by the end of this month, you know, to meet uh, financial, you know, uh, fair play uh, regulations um, and all that. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it came out, where was it, yesterday or the day before, if I can remember rightly, you know, saying that Inter Milan um, have offered a card um, as part of a swap deal uh, for Romelu Lukaku, but reportedly I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is keen on recommending a card in. I think he, he, he lost the captaincy uh, back um, in February, you know, did a card and obviously Inter Milan have increased and become frustrated with him, and obviously, you know, Inter Milan, you know, do uh, want to um, offload him, but we're not keen on bringing a card in. Obviously, reports were reflected out last week, uh, saying that, you know, Inter Milan um, had offered us Ivan Perisic, you know, plus cash, um, the doff the doff does um, Ivan Perisic, you know, plus cash, um, you know, uh, for Romelu Lukaku, but you know, Manchester United had turned this down because obviously, you know, Ivan Perisic um, is no longer um, a Manchester United uh, target. Um, he's no longer a Manchester United target. He was a long-term target under Mourinho, but he's no longer now um, a Manchester United target um, as Ivan Perisic because he, he would be a short-term player now because Ivan Perisic is what thirty? Is he thirty-one uh, years of age? Um, and all that. And the main factor reason why we didn't get him under Jose Mourinho because obviously, you know, we was not willing to pay, um, you know, the forty-eight million pounds at the time. Uh, that Inter Milan uh, were currently uh, demanding. I think if we was to let Lukaku go as part of any swap deal, you know, we we were demanding, you know, Inter Milan's Milan Skriniar, but obviously, you know, Inter Milan are reluctant to let Milan Skriniar go because obviously Milan Skriniar has just recently signed a new contract. Obviously, he has been um, at Inter Milan um, a couple of uh, years um, and all that stuff. So in Inter Milan, you know, um, are reluctant, you know, to uh, currently sell him. So, like I said, I probably expect around four or five players, you know, to leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer. But looking at this, ultimately, Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding. Don't get me wrong, we've got to be uh, ruthless um, in this summer transfer window, but he's in the process of rebuilding. 
because the only player that's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has is Daniel James and obviously you know, we got him £15 million pounds. Obviously, you know, there were add-ons included, which did potentially write to around 17 or 18 million pounds, but that's very, uh, that's very, very cheap, you know, compared, you know, compared to, you know, what we paid for Lukaku, 75 million, you know, Paul Pogba, of course, at 89 million pounds. And we have got a history of spending big on players, like I said, um, especially in recent years. And it's not all about spending big on players. It's not all about getting them well-established players, like I said, um, because it doesn't always guarantee you success. You can get the best players in the world, you know, if not playing as a unit and they're not playing them um, as a team, you know, it's got, you know, it's potentially you know, not going to get you anywhere. But Solskjaer's inherent level of Jose Mourinho's players, you know, he's inheriting Van Gaal's players, you know, there's Matthew from the David Moyes area. There's still four or five players here, of course, uh, from the Alex Ferguson um, area um, and all that. Um, so lots to sort out uh, this summer, uh, like I uh, currently um, said. Like uh, currently I've said, um, and all that, I think Small and Jones now um, are too uh, inconsistent. This is why I said we need two central defenders because Small and Jones um, are too um, inconsistent. You know, Small has been here nine years, Jones um, has been here eight years, and they have been two long serving players at the club. But like I said, they are too inconsistent now. It's a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving them two uh, new long term contract term and all that. So that was bad business, you know, for Manchester United. Um, I think it's looking like that the Hay is definitely not going to be uh, leaving uh, the club. Obviously, we do know that the Hay um, has been here um, eight years, so he has been a long serving here, and you know, Solskjaer's admired him, his fantastic uh, career and, um, and all that but obviously the club um, have failed you know, to come to an agreement to get him um, a new contract uh, reportedly said David De Gea wants 350 grand a week, obviously the club um, are not willing to meet um, his £350,000 a week uh, wage demands um, and all that I think David De Gea's likely destination is going to be uh, PSG, obviously PSG have now stepped their interest up in De Gea because obviously you know, PSG um, lost Buffon they have lost uh, Buffon now so obviously they've stepped their interest up, I think it did in the say PSG are preparing to put a bid in for him of around £60 million obviously at full value for a goalkeeper definitely De Gea is worth more than 60 million pounds I think at full value he's probably worth um, 100 million pounds but obviously we're not going to get 100 million pounds because he's in uh, the final year of his contract term and all that um but yeah, he's been a good servant here to Manchester United. Obviously, Real Madrid have been long admirers of him. Obviously, Real Madrid were on the brink of getting him in 2015, but due to a fax machine, uh, the dealer never uh, materialised him and all that. Um, obviously, I think Juventus have also you know, been in there for him, but he's made over 300 appearances for Manchester United in all competitions. You know, obviously, you know, he's won everything um, either domestically um, and all that. And I do, you know, uh, really, really like him. We do know how imperative you know that David De Gea is, but obviously, we've been in the process of trying to get him a new contract now, at least for the last 18 or is it, uh, 19 uh, months. But obviously, you no, know, we haven't come to an agreement to get him one report came out last week saying that we was preparing to offer him um, a new contract, um, you know, a fresh one um, and all that. Obviously, it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that he did turn down a final contract um, offer uh, from Manchester United um, and all that. But like I said, if De Gea leaves, I think we're going to need to, to buy a goalkeeper to replace him. You know, I don't think it's in it initially in Oligan and Solskjaer's plans. It came out about three weeks ago or four weeks ago about this, saying that he's willing to promote Sergio Romero as our number one goalkeeper. You know, obviously, um, I've got reservations about that because I don't think, you know, Romero is yet reliable enough, you know, to become um, our number one uh, goalkeeper and all that. Um, um, obviously, you know, we've got Dean Henderson, but like I said with Dean Henderson, he's too inexperienced at the moment. He's been on loan with Sheffield United, he's only young. I think we need I think the club need to orchestrate on loaning him out for another season, you know, to gain him um, a bit uh, more um, experience um, and all that. We have got Lee Grant. Um but yeah, you know, we definitely and definitely, you know, uh, need to buy a goalkeeper to replace him and all that. There has been quite a few names you mentioned, you know, who could replace David De Gea um, at Manchester United. You know, there's been there were a lot of talks last week going on about uh, Jan Blanca from Atletico Madrid. Um, I've reportedly said he wants to leave Atletico Madrid uh, due to her broken promises and, on, and all that. Maybe another main factor reason why he wants to leave Atletico Madrid because maybe he's frustrated with Atletico Madrid's lack of competitiveness um, and all that. Um, but he said he was keen on the move to Manchester United because he said he, he was a Manchester United fan. He, well, he, he was a Manchester United fan um, as a child um, and all that, um, it basically um, said. Jan Blanc's 26. So he's regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, is Jan Blanc. He's not on the same calibre level um, as David De Gea um, and all that, but very, very good goalkeeper. Obviously, um, he's two years uh, younger than David De Gea. Obviously, he has been at Athletic Madrid for five years. I think last season it was only Liverpool's Allison that kept um, as many uh, clean sheets um, as Jan um, Blanc. But I think he's made over 200 appearances for Athletic Madrid. He's won three major honours with them. Um, I think including the Europa League um, and the UEFA for a Super Cup um, and all that. And obviously, before he was at Athletic Madrid, um, obviously, you know, he was at um, Benfica um, and all that, you know, when he was um, a lot, lot younger, uh, Jan um, Blanc. Um, obviously, his buyout clause is around £100 million. Obviously, he recently extended his contract uh, back um, in April. 
Um, obviously, I think he also got a pair eyes um, in his buyout clause, uh, did Jan um, or Blanc. But obviously, you know, there's been uh, talks um, about him. Came out five weeks ago, was it six weeks ago now, saying that Manchester United you know, were paying to trigger his £100 million buyout clause. Um, obviously, there's also been talks of Jordan Pitford uh, before as well. He's been at Everton a couple of seasons. Obviously, Everton got him from Sunderland for around £25 million. Pounds. Um, like I said um, a couple of years ago I think he's on the contract with Everton if I'm right um, until 2024 um, is uh, Jordan uh, Pitford but also he's been on our um, agenda there's also been talks that Ajax uh, goalkeeper coming in to replace him that's uh, Andrea uh, Onana <coughs> I think initially you know, rated at around £40 million pounds, um, and all that. but like I said you know, I think David De Gea um, is currently you know, going to be uh, leaving him um, and all that. Um, with one matter, um, I'm not. I haven't read up about him. You know, lately. You know, last time I read up about him, he did say Manchester United you know, were willing to offer him a new. Well, we'd offered him um, a new contract. Um, obviously, you know, um, he's got about is it two weeks or just under two weeks on his um, existing deal. You know, uh, one matter. Um, obviously, you know, the contract we would have offered him it wouldn't have been a long-term contract. Obviously, you know, we're uh, reflecting him um, on his age because he is 31 years of age now. Um, he has uh, lost uh, that yard um, of pay, so one matter. And obviously, we have got released this around 14 players. Obviously, Herrera's on that release list obviously of Lenzi and that's um, on that release list but actually no one Matt was not um, included um, on that release list so maybe we are keen on keeping him um, at least uh, for another year uh, some people say he needs to go but I'd like him to stay at least for another season because I think he's been very consistent uh, for Manchester United very very good indeed you know he has been here uh, five years well no he, he doesn't even get he doesn't get in the squad now he's basically you know used him um, as a squad player um, his one matter and all that but uh, like I said you know I think we're reportedly not offered him um, a new contract I think Newcastle have been in for him um, obviously you know he has played under Rafa Benitez as one matter so maybe Rafa Benitez is keen on reuniting with him. I think obviously you know, Newcastle have, have got new owners are supposed to be, supposedly you know coming in um, and all that. Or they have they coming in? Um, I do not don't know. I haven't read you know too much um, up um, about that. Obviously, you know Barcelona have been in talks of getting one matter of um, on a free transfer. But yeah, maybe if he does leave Manchester United, his preference would be you know to go back to Spain. Obviously, because he grew up in Spain. Obviously, he began his uh, career um, and that um, in Spain. You know, did, uh, one matter. Um, but yeah, you know, some people still say, you know, that he does need to currently go. But the main part of this video, you know, was to give you an update um, about Harry Maguire. As I've actually you know, been updating you on a regular basis, he's now one of um, our priority uh, targets. Reportedly, you know, it's been blatantly made clear that we would have to break the world transfer record uh, for the defender if we want to get a deal um, or the line uh, for Harry Maguire. But reportedly now, we could be willing to offload uh, Andres Pereira in exchange uh, for Harry Maguire. So this could persuade Leicester, you know, to lower their price tag for him. And also, it said uh, in the media the other day that we could also so offer Rojo or even Eric Bay um, in exchange uh, for Harry Maguire, um, of course. So, you know, it did say Edward um, is keen on spending uh, £80 million um, on his services. You know, it did say we were willing to offer him a five year contract, you know, worth up to 350 grand a week um, and all that. And I do like Harry Maguire, I really do like him, but I just don't think he's worth 80 um, or 90 million pounds. And a lot of, you know, fans, vast majority of fans, you know, will, will agree with me um, on that. Uh, but obviously, we've got the financial power, you know, to meet his valuation anyway. But City have been in for him, but City won't pay um, up to um, £80 million uh, for of um, his services. So um, anyway guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel and if you do consider a subscriber, um, as always, and take care, God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.